We had the Healthy Child Programme, of which there were five mandated visits, contacts with families that were commissioned, of which the two and a half year review is the last official contact that we have with the family. The two year review that we did before Integrated Working, it was very much the health visitor team did the review. I think one of the issues would be that we were very much isolated working and we tended perhaps not to share that information with the nurseries as well, more specifically with the families. My other little boy had his two year check um, at a different family centre a couple of years ago um, and it was very, it was in a very formal environment, although it was still at a family centre, the room wasn't really set up so that the children could explore, so that they really felt comfortable. Um, it was more about sort of ticking off the sheet. Previously we'd get like a snapshot and obviously it's a strange environment for the child. Um, I maybe haven't met the child before um, and as we were saying earlier it's nice for the child to actually see someone that he recognise, he or she recognises and relaxes in front of. We might bring um, bring up an issue with a parent and then they would say, oh, well, when, when so-and-so had their two-year check, they did bring that up and it, it was that information wasn't necessarily being fed back to us. Um, the, the first year check, it was just done at the doctor's surgery with the health visitor, so it was, it was very different. I was delighted when Gail rung me because obviously with the two-year-old integrated checks between us, it was a bit like, oh, who's going to be doing the first move? Am I just sitting here? What? what's going to be going on because I still feel a very bit in the dark and we had a sort of a, quite an informal sort of chat get to know each other um, and you know my role um, and, and her role. I think from my perspective what was really good is that we get an understanding of each other's roles as well don't we yeah and perhaps some of the health prom promotion um, messages as in immunization safety yeah. um, oral health um, those sorts of things yeah we're sort of yeah. picking up from each other as well it's something new that we have to sort of buy them into that this is for the good it's for the benefit um, and I think when we explain why, you know, that you don't have to go off to a, a clinical place with your child to do any of this stuff, it's all brought to the table. It's just a relaxed atmosphere where we can sit and we can discuss. And everybody's there for the child and their development and there to support the family if or when they might need it. I don't have the power to refer to speech and language or anything like that, whereas Louise does. So any concerns we can, it's sort of having that link mm. into those referrals as well, which I think is really good for us because we can get to a brick wall and go, where are we going to go now? But we were saying about early intervention has been our main key in, in my setting because mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of vulnerable parents. I think it's going to be different with, with, with each nursery. I don't think you're necessarily going to have the same setup with, no. with each nursery because they're all, they are all quite different. And as we got talking, um, we talked about the familiarity of the nursery, having it there was great. Um, we talked about what sort of times of the day would be best because a lot of our parents work and I know they don't like to take time off work to come and do these things. So we've set it up for a daytime lunch first and that if that's not going to work, we can adapt that. So we've got that scope for change. We have had parents that have said they've received letters for their two-year checks um, and um, that they hadn't replied yet um, and have agreed to come to the joint one. I think some of our parents are quite vulnerable parents um, and having me there as someone they see on a regular basis does help them with their confidence. They send appointments out and then you don't get a response to, like we've got one coming up next week. Yeah. Um, that's had no response from the letters. Um, so mum come in and because I've got that relationship with them, I'm like, oh come on you, if you're not reading the letters, you know, it's been quite sort of relaxed with them. Oh, we're doing it in the setting and she was, oh no, 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 yeah, no, that's, that's great, I prefer it like that. So because they're always coming into the setting like five times a week or um, it's just an environment that they're comfortable in so they don't feel so looked upon. The ages and stages questionnaire was introduced as a national introduction because we need to have all children being assessed with the same criteria. What's really useful is that you can provide the questionnaires for the parents yeah. and actually because you're seeing the parents usually 
you know on a daily basis yeah. you can um because we were talking about filling out the forms as yes, well and yeah. i know that you've helped some of the parents yeah. with filling out the forms if they've not quite understood what's required yeah Filling out the review was quite difficult at first. Um, me and my husband attempted to do, a, do it just sort of on our knowledge of Caleb at first without him being there and we found that actually we weren't really sure of a lot of the answers and we needed him there really. So we, we took it one question at a time and sort of got him to act out the question as it were to see if he could actually do it. And um, yeah, the amount of questions in the questionnaire was, was really good and really broad as well. It covered sort of all aspects of his learning and his development. But the questionnaire was very detailed, um, but really, really good. Like they, they covered everything, which was good. And they gave you like, um, like for instance, did she do this, 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 this? And they gave you sort of like uh, options to pick from and stuff and areas where you can write your own comments. So, you know, really good with our setting because it's from they're very fearful of professionals with you know the badges and everything and they can be quite um, fearful so a lot of my parents because I'm one for getting feedback anyway so they've preferred that we're in because our key workers with the ASQs we use that we've sort of took bits from that as our starting points mm -hmm. for our assessment when they first come in um, so we've got a lot of that information so when the parents aren't being so filling in the forms we sort of fill a lot of it in with the parent without sort of prior to Louise and then we go through it again but it's just I think getting that inf that proper information because they feel that they've got to say their child can walk up steps and their mm. child can count to ten and because the key workers aware of those questions in the ASQ we know if they can or if they can't so it's sort of just making sure that that child is doing that so we started off doing it in the office but it didn't work I mean a it's tiny yeah uh, quite noisy you know a few interruptions um, so and also the child was being brought about was being brought out of the setting and the mum was in there and then of course they've got to go back to the setting and leave their mum and they didn't want to do that and it was almost like they've been naughty or something and they're being you know taken mm. to the office and then made to stand on scales and you know all these sorts of mm. things so didn't really work uh, and I didn't feel I was getting any sense of the child at all. We've moved it into the um, two-year room now, which is um, a lot better, really, I think, because the key workers there, everybody's just working, it's a normal environment. In the home corner, and we put some scales, because we found the children were a bit thing about going on the scales, wasn't yeah, they? Yeah, they're a bit fearful of the scales. So we've put scales in there, and um, we've got a picture of Louise on the wall, and like measuring thing, uh, height um, charts the children have made. So they're sort of just aware of what's going on. And then I can just sit at the table with mum and child and have a chat and um, it's much more relaxed, I think. I think probably the parents prefer that. Um, the integrated review was definitely more um, child friendly. It was more child focused. Caleb um, felt very comfortable. <laughs> Toddled off and kicked a ball around and was much happier to do the activities, really. So, yeah, it was, it, it made, I think it made me and Caleb feel much more comfortable about the experience. I think it's very beneficial. Obviously, I see Caleb a lot of the time at home, but you know, some of the time he's he's not with me, and their views supported what I felt at home, um, and they had some observations that they've made as well that obviously I wouldn't have known about in any other you know, other situation. So yeah, I think it was really good to have both points of view on that. It was all it was all made very clear to me about why why they were changing it to an integrated one, and um, but it made sense to and um, it, I think it benefited me and Molly to have someone else there that she knew and that knew her personally, so it was good. She thought it was just a, one big sort of game, she didn't realise that what she was doing was being sort of watched and stuff, So, which is good, I think it sort of relaxed her a little bit. I think it would cut down on sort of the communication between the, the health visitor and me and then me having to go back to the nursery to speak to them about it, you know, it, it would lead on to conversations between me and the nursery, his key worker, as to how we can sort of go forward with any needs that he's got rather than taking in bits of paper from them or, you know, it just cuts down on the middleman, I suppose, really. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, normally when there's two professionals that come together, parents just feel that there is an issue and normally there is an issue. So it has been just reassuring the parents that it's fine, you know, this is for your child, you know, we can get extra help if we need it and stuff like that. So it's, we're not testing your parent capability. Your child doesn't, you know, if you live on the ground floor flat, we don't expect your child to be hopping on one foot up the steps. You know, it's not a, you know, when it's not every child's not, look, it's just an overall view just to sort of, you know, so it's just reassuring them that it's not a checklist and it's not, it's mm. okay, you're not failing if they're not doing this sort of thing. So mm. there's been a lot of that with them yeah. before mm. as well. Most parents already are involved in their child's development, but there are a proportion that perhaps see the child as doing the thing on their own, you know, they'll just get on with it. Whereas actually giving the parent a tool to actually say, well, look, why don't you try this? And then they, they feel better about themselves, they feel more engaged with their child. I mean, obviously, we know what we're doing in the setting with the children. But again, after having the two check, it gives us ideas. I go back into the setting and I can say, oh, I really can see that we need to do some of this um, sort of at the moment to focus on. So um, it's where it, it's sort of wearing our awareness of um, the more development stages as well as the parents. And I think it opens them up to us a bit more as well. They come back after the two-year checks and they've said, oh, you know, that was really helpful and I've gone away and I've done this. And so, yeah, it definitely has um, helped with the parents. We've kind of said that with certain children that we, if, if we might discuss them again sort of in six months and the parents have been there when we've said mm. it um, that we, we will leave it six months if sometimes we feel maybe we need to do a section of the review again um, that we would go back to that review do that section again and see if there's been sort of improvements and whether a referral would then have to be made or, or not. Yeah. Um, I liked the fact that I learnt things about my daughter that I didn't know, um, learnt about different activities that she enjoys that I don't do at home, that I do do at home now. Um, I liked having a different opinion on um, her development. Um, and it just made the whole situation a little more relaxed, having um, another member of staff from the nursery there, not just sort of me and the health visitor. And, you know, then the health visitor can make a proper judgment of the child having my opinion and the nursery's opinion. I definitely recommend the integrated review to other parents. It was much more beneficial to me to hear the points of view of the nursery and more beneficial for Caleb as well. Um, he felt happier about the environment that he was in and had his key worker there as well. So, you know, he felt a little bit more comfortable about that as well. It wasn't so many adults that he didn't know in a room asking him to do things, asking him questions. It was just like a day at nursery, but with mummy there, really. <laughs> um, we also uh, talk about the red book, you know, the development red book. We also question the parents, can we see it when we go along to the home to meet with the children or the child for the first time? We ask if we can see their red health book. We ask the parents, do they use it? Do they know how to use it about the milestones especially for our babies that are coming in and to basically offer out what a good tool it is and that they should take it to any meetings they have with the health visitors so we already promote promote their little red development book becky sees that what we would be documenting in the red book yeah. and and so with the parents you can ask to see that red book yeah, as well yeah. can you um so that's a really good communication um uh, useful tool for communication between yeah. The parents and, and us as well. In the nursery we've definitely got a lot of parents that the red book's kind of like a really special thing to them and for them to actually have stuff written in there as well to keep is nice for them as well. Actually it probably does give them confidence because they can see what their child is doing and that it's actually a developmental stage and that they will reach this next developmental stage at another time uh, and how they can actually facilitate that child reaching its best potential.